Hello and welcome back to the Wrexham Way. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to today's episode as we take on Porto in the second leg of the Champions League first knockout round. A bit of a mouthful, but we're in it. We won 4-2 in the first leg in yesterday's episode, so all we have to do really is just see this one home. Easier said than done, though, I'm sure. Following that, we have a huge game in the Premier League against Manchester United, where we have actually taken a bit of a dip in form. So this needs to be a superb win for us today if we want to have any sort of hope of winning that Premier League title, because with 11 games to go this season... We are now 11 points behind Man City. I'll be honest, I don't think it's possible for us to win the Premier League this season. I think we are too far behind. But we need top four because if we don't win the Champions League this season, we've only got one more year to win it potentially. And if we don't get top four this season, we'll never have that chance to win it. So we desperately need top four. Not a huge amount to talk to you about since you guys were last here because we have only played three games in between episodes, starting off with a 4-1 win over West Ham United. Really good result for us there. Uh, very, very pleased with it. We then drew 1-1 to Aston Villa, which was frustrating, but, you know, it's one of those things that happen every now and again. You have to expect a draw. What we weren't expecting, though, was a loss to Crystal Palace. Now, what we did do rather stupidly maybe, was rotate this team quite heavily because I wanted to rest the players for the game against uh, Porto and Man United. Backfired, we lost, and now, as I say, we find ourselves 11 points off the top. Only one point away from Liverpool in fourth place, but the title's not on. I cannot see a situation where we win the title. Maybe we can dream, maybe we can dream, but I... I'm not going to right now. This is the team that is starting off today's game. We've got uh, Balestra, Luis Felipe, Hoya and Neto in front of Kamara. Jez Finley comes into the CDM spot today because Daniel Tarpe is suspended and Sal Martinez is not registered for Champions League football. Al Parslan, Paniotov and Daniel Patrick maintain their midfield status with Nice and Perea leading the line. So it's virtually a full strength team just with Jez Finley a little bit further back than usual. So, as kickoff is upon us here today, we won 4 2 in the first leg away from home. Theoretically, this should just be a simple result for us to see it out and get ourselves into those quarterfinals, which will be very exciting. In the meantime, Nice can't score the opening goal of the game to give us a three goal lead. Now, I haven't looked what other teams are doing in the Champions League. I've just not wanted to. We need to focus on what we're doing as opposed to what other teams are doing. And yes, it would be lovely if teams like Bayern Munich lose, if PSG lose, if Barcelona lose, for example. It would be lovely if all those teams end up losing. And on paper, it's a much easier ride for us through into the Champions League final and to win it. But we can't focus on that. We have to beat what's in front of us. And right now, what's in front of us is a Porto team who scored two goals past us last time out and did look pretty strong. So before we can even think about what potentially could await us in later rounds, we have to focus on what's in front of us. And hopefully Kamara's going to hoof a ball forward right now all the way to Hoya, about 10 yards in front of him, before the ball is finally met to Perea and he opens up the scoring with his 22nd of the season. Okay. Okay, good. We've taken the lead. It's a three-goal lead now on aggregate. I'd like to think, you know, we are comfortable. Frank Nice on the ball for us right now, though, in an attacking area. His cross into the middle is not great, and it does go straight through into the arms of the Porto keeper, who hoofs it over the halfway line, won by Neto in the air, though, quite nicely. And again, we can just deliver this ball to the edge of the penalty area. This time, Perea into the middle, cleared by the Porto defence. We're not really getting bodies in the middle, which isn't happening quite as much as it used to. Potentially, that's just, you know a tweak that's happened in one of the updates recently and it's just taken me a while to realise it potentially that the Mazalas and the centre bit on attack just aren't getting as forward as quickly. That could be part of it. I don't know. But still, Perea can't win the ball in the air but Daniel Patrick does win the rebound. Perea is through and Perea does make it 2-0. 6-2 on aggregate after 10 minutes. Right. At this stage, I feel like I can sit back and relax a little bit. Okay then. Jez Finley on the ball in towards Paniotov as he gets it into Nice. And Nice now over to Perea. Perea on a hat trick. Can't put that one in the back of the net. But a hat trick for him today would be his first for a long, long time. But also, surely would guarantee his a place in the quarterfinals of the Champions League had he scored it. 
The good thing is though, we are seeing plenty of highlights in our favor right now. And that's something we've not really seen for a good few game weeks. Even the last game we played against Porto, we didn't really see too many highlights in our favor despite the four goals. But inside of 30 minutes here, Perea has got himself a hat trick. Superb work from, in my opinion, the best player in the world right now. Yes, he only came second in Ballon d'Or, but I don't care. He's the man who's got the hat trick here today. And this should be enough to see us in to the later stages of the Champions League. Even if Porto do score some very good goals. Right. I mean, I said right. And then didn't talk. Either way, we've scored a goal. Fantastic. So Perea with his fourth. A great ball from Jez Finley from deep. And Perea just getting that one in at the near post. Really acute angle. But taking it around absolutely everyone. 8-3 on aggregate. We're through. We're through. In fact, at this point, you know, you know, because we are winning so much, let's keep our players fresh, shall we? Let's drop the tempo to a low tempo. More direct passing. Let us... If we can go on to this, can we just not counter-press so much? Let's slow the pace down a little bit. In fact, what we'll also do a little bit as well, I think, is time waste a bit sometimes. Hopefully, what this will do is it will make us less tired. And then we'll be fitter for the Man United game than the Man United players are. And then we'll beat Man United and everything will be absolutely dandy as we go on to win a spectacular Premier League title or something like that. Maybe not quite the Premier League title, but as Perea gets his fifth of the game, what a player he is today, we are comfortably through. And actually, I feel like it is working. Our players are nowhere near as tired as they normally would be at this stage of the game, which is fantastic. We will take some of those tired faces off the pitch, such as Paniotov. Uh, let's get Daniel Patrick off as well. And let's get, in fact, the whole midfield three, maybe. Or should we bring a, let's bring a centre back on in Nopadom. Let's do that. Hopefully, though, these changes are just going to help us see the game out comfortably as Perea may have been offside, but if he was onside, has a double hat-trick here today. What a performance from Perea this would be. I mean, it's, it still is. Five goals or, or six goals. What a performance from Perea, who's now up to 27 goals for the season. But as the clock ticks down, is a seventh goal on the cards here? Could a seventh goal be on the cards here? And if it is, will it be that man Perea? Well, not in that instance, because the ball just goes straight through to the Porto keeper. And I feel like this is just going to be the closing highlight of the game, essentially. Nothing much going on here. As it's cleared all the way to Clivert. Asper then brings it forward. Right, this could be a goal. Perea waiting in the middle. Asper shoots instead, really. And it almost cannons straight off the back of a Porto player into the back of the net for an own goal. Luckily for Porto, it doesn't. But it is the end of the road here for the Portuguese team as we are the team advancing into the quarterfinals and we'll see in a few moments time who we're going to be facing in those quarterfinals. And if we get through that, the semi-final and if we get through that, potentially even the final. Come on referee, blow your whistle. Let's put an end to this Porto misery. Let's get to this Man United game. I feel like we are in great form right now with this result. Come on. So, are there any big shocks in this? Well, PSG are through. That's annoying. In fact, the only shock really is maybe Hoffenheim beating Inter Milan. All of the first seed teams are through other than Inter Milan. All the second team teams uh, are out other than Hoffenheim, as you can see. So, okay. This is going to be difficult. There's no easy games to come. You know, Porto, looking at the scoreline, maybe that was an easy game. But there's no easy games now. All of these teams easily could be, and other than Hoffenheim, I'd like to think Hoffenheim would be a good result for us. I think we could do that. I'm also going to rest all our players, training rest for two days, and I want to go to Perea and praise his last match, because that was absolutely incredible. So for the game coming up, I don't want to make any changes. Other than maybe Jez Finley coming off the pitch... And then we bring, where is he down here? Daniel Tarpe back on. Just because I know he is a better CDM than Jess Finley is. That might just be the option for us. But other than that, that's the one change. So kickoff is upon us here today against Manchester United. And we are now at the business end of the season. 
you know, after this game, we'll have 10 games left in the Premier League. We're in the final stages of the Champions League. Perea can't finish a 1-1 one -on -one opportunity. What else is new? But we are really at a crucial point of the season where we need to win absolutely every game possible. Like, we, we cannot afford to drop points or lose games in the Champions League. Drop points in the Premier League... And there's a good chance, if I just pause the game quickly to go back to the league table, now I've got the option for league table again. Uh, drop points in the Premier League, a good chance we won't come in the top four. Lose games in the Champions League, obviously that means we won't win the Champions League. So we're in a really tricky situation now where we need every single player to be absolutely 1 million percent focused for this business end of the season. It's business time. That's what it is. It's business time. We... <laughs> I don't know why I love that phrase so much. I just seem to love it. Now, I think I may have just seen Liverpool go behind in their game. Yes, they have gone 1-0 down to Leicester. It's behind my head right now. So Leicester taking the lead against Liverpool, which might actually push us up into fourth place in the Premier League table. It definitely will do now that we've taken the lead against Man United. If we win this game, would we actually go ahead of Man United? I can't remember what the point situation was looking like. But uh, a great finish here from Paniotov to put us in front. What does this mean then? It puts us definitely into a top four. As Hoyer puts that one in the back of the net, he may have been offside though, I think. So let's not celebrate too much. But if he does score it, that's a superb way to take a two-goal lead into half time, And it does count. Hoyer getting a very important goal there. A two-goal lead over Manchester United. And could it be three? It is three. You love to see it. What's just happened at the end of this first half? We're back. We are back. We've played really up and down football the past few weeks or so and months just not being... Okay, well, this goal's just allowed. But the, the point... We're still winning 2-0. The, the point still stands. And that's really close to being onside as well. But he was off. The point I'm trying to make is we're back. Maybe. Potentially. I hope so. It's business time. And with 30 minutes plus added time or so to go in this game, it, it's looking better and better by the minute. I think the fact that we slowed things down in that last game against Porto, we rested our players in the game, kept them fresh in the game, has really oh, helped us out here today. If Daniel Patrick could have just put that either side of the keeper, that shot was powerful enough to go in the back of the net. The keeper's positioning was good. The shot was straight at the keeper. And because of it, he didn't have to move. And the keeper made a pretty solid save. Also, Liverpool have just equalised via an own goal from Springer Downs there, which is uh, not a great one for us. But I think we should still be ahead of Liverpool in the table as it stands right now, I believe. But let's not get too excited about that. As Perea oh, can't score. Yeah, despite them drawing, we'll be ahead of them by a single point, which puts us back into the top four, which is exactly where we need to be. Yes, the title might be off, but top four is a must. We have to be in the top four. We have to be in the top four. Otherwise, it could be curtains for any sort of Champions League glory in this save file. As the ball to our parcelin is good. And can we grab another goal? The keeper pushing that one in the back of a the net there, helping it on its way. But Leicester gets his goal. Now... Potentially Frank Nice offside. It's going to VAR this, which I'm concerned about. Goal awarded, that's fine. Not quite sure where Nice was standing in the build-up to all of this. But luckily for us, we have a three-goal lead over Man United. And this may means we're back. And can we grab a fourth? Can we grab a fourth? We can. Daniel Tarpe at the far post. Now, was he offside? No, the referee's running away. No VAR needed for this one. Yes, it's only 4-0, but we've put the ball in the back of the net five times the day against Manchester United. I just dropped my pen on my desk. I didn't mean to do that. I'll be honest, I know Man United are good, and I know that we have capitulated quite a few times, but I cannot see them scoring four goals. I cannot see them scoring four goals in less than 20 minutes. So as I make a couple of changes very quickly, Daniel Patrick for Sousa, let's bring Asperon for Paniotov, and let's bring Felipe off this time for Bright, Ari and B. Confirm those changes. We do have a chance down the left-hand side of the attack with Al them back to Balestra into Nice, who turns back to Balestra, who avoids the challenge. Great way to hop. Oh, what a brilliant goal that is from Paniotov. And also, brilliant play from us to hold on to the ball around the edge of the penalty area. That was wonderful stuff to just hold on to it and then offload the ball nicely to someone facing the goal. And that is what you call 
a superb performance here today. 5-0 against Man United. Okay, I'm happy. Things are good. A great result for us here today. And it's also massively changed the goal difference situation with us and Man United. Massively changed it. And if it comes down to it towards the end of the season and we finish level on points to Man United, that goal difference is going to make a huge difference as we try to overturn their goal difference in general to finish ahead of them in the table. Uh, looks like Liverpool lost in the end. Oh no, they drew because they're one point behind us. Newcastle must have picked up a win. They did. So they are level on points to the bit behind us based on goal difference. So, okay, we're back in that top four, but only just. We are going to have to be our absolute best for the last 10 games of the season for a chance of top four football. I don't think the title is within our grasp. It's going to take a huge bottling from Man City or any of the other teams up there. I think it's Leicester and uh, Man United ahead of us. A big bottling from those teams if we are going to end up winning the title. So I don't think that's going to happen, but a top four we have to get. But like I said, that sentence several times this episode but I can't underestimate its importance we need it and so to finish off today's episode the Champions League quarterfinal and semi-final draws are here so for the quarterfinal Bayern Munich Hoffenheim okay well that's Hoffenheim out the draw that's frustrating Newcastle I'd kind of want Newcastle Liverpool which means we're going to have Man United Barcelona or PSG please not PSG it's not. We get Barcelona. We get Barcelona. And they're tough. But I, I, I'd, I'd back us. I'd back us to beat Barcelona with a team that, I mean, they've got De Ligt in there, who's real. De Jong's still there. Kai Havertz is still there. Uh, Charles D. I can't say his surname. Mark, they've got quite an old team. Quite an old team. I'm not sure if that plays to our advantage or not. Also a 35-year-old Mbappe. Okay, they've got a very good team. It's old. It, well, it's good, but... It, ah, hmm. We'll work it out. As for the semi-finals, should we get there? Bayern Munich or Hoffenheim, please be us. PSG and Man United. So we'll have to... Well, to be fair, we know we can beat Newcastle or Liverpool. We know we can beat them. It's likely it's going to be a Bayern Munich or a PSG, I'd say, from that top one. So actually, to avoid both of those two teams is pretty good. It could have been an easier route to the final, an easier. But it could have been a lot harder as well. It could have been a lot harder. And so naturally, next time out, we'll come back for both Barcelona games, but also Liverpool wedged in the middle of that. Oh, Okay. So thank you ever so much for watching today's episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. And of course, if you have done, make sure you drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe if you're new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, have a lovely day. Speak to you soon. Goodbye.